Hi everyone, welcome to the Center for Teaching Excellence's video studio. I am here today with Sid Dobrin, who is an AI expert. He comes to us from the University of Florida, and I just thought I would take an opportunity to ask him a few questions to, to share with us, if that's okay. Yeah, it's with great, you. great, great. Thanks for having me here. Awesome. So you've been on campus the entire day. I'm sure you're pretty tired, but you've had an opportunity to meet with faculty, staff, administrators. What are some of your impressions? Well, I mean, I think first of all, you know, being on SIU's campus and recognizing what a great resource your faculty are. I mean, you've got experts in a lot of fields doing a lot of really exciting things. And like other campuses around the world, we're right at that point of having the conversation of what really is AI going to do on this campus. And I think that the conversations that are coming out of your faculty are going to be, you know, they're really exciting. They're both disciplinary specific in terms of what is going to happen in my field. There's a lot of concern both in terms of research and also what are we going to be able to do with our students with this. So it's a really kind of generative, exciting conversation. It's been really invigorating to be able to talk with everyone here. Absolutely, that's great. And just so everybody knows, I should have mentioned your uh, uh, faculty in English. Correct. Right? Uh, rhetorical yeah. composition, correct? Rhetoric and composition. Rhetoric and composition, yes. very good. Yep. Okay, so uh, one of our first stops, um, so you're talking about all these resources we have, but one of our first stops this morning was the CVEX, which is the Center for Virtual Expression. It's been in existence for about a year now, um, but we're going to have our official opening this week. What are your thoughts about that center? Well, my first thought is, man, what a cool space. <laughs> That's one of those places you just want to come hang out. And, you know, we have we have a version of that uh, through the English department at UF called the Trace Innovation Initiative, and we finally got in a decent space. But you look at a space like yours, and one of the things I love about a place like that is the relaxed atmosphere and how it generates the opportunity for collaboration. You're going to have students and faculty and grad students in there who are just going to want to, you know, mess around with the virtual environments and start thinking about what can we do with this stuff and the potential for that in there is great. You've got great equipment, great atmosphere. Uh, it looks like a great, from the conversations I've had, some really exciting forward-thinking faculty and administrators in there doing some really cool stuff. Yeah, that is true. I mean, I'm pretty excited about that space myself and I think uh, it's not siloed. As you can see, we are wanting to collaborate with the Center for Teaching Excellence, CVEX, and the different disciplines. So I think uh, with the right sort of motivation by administrators to keep that space going, it will be a sort of a jewel on our campus. So uh, as you've been talking throughout the day, so I would actually say what we're doing is getting together um, some expertise around it. And you've been saying that there are three things yep. that every uh, person or faculty staff should be thinking about when it comes to AI, and those three things are? Yeah, so AI really does only require three things at a fundamental level. Uh, one is data. you got to have a lot of data. Mm -hmm. And so where that data comes from is an interesting part of the conversation. The other thing you've got to have is great computing power, um, whether that's in individual locations or a bigger, broader campus kind of approach to computation and uh, computing work. And then, of course, as you mentioned, expertise, knowing how to use the AI, knowing how uh, to use the data, how to interpret the data. Those three things have to come together for AI to be uh, effective. Yeah, for sure. And CVEX is going to offer us that. I think um, the data that we can have can be both proprietary things that are SIU specific, right? If we get like a custom GPT going or something like that, um, all kinds of different. Uh, we do have the data dog, which is one of our supercomputers. Hopefully that can help us with some of our data. Uh, but having a place to go and do that, I think, with the CVEX is, is really going to be uh, pivotal. But you're talking a lot about policy. And one thing that's really struck me is that we need to think about what our core values are as an institution. So what advice, just to kind of recap the things that you've said, so we can have it memorialized in this video. Uh, around they call that policy. evidence, right? Yeah, evidence, yeah, <laughs> that, you know. But what would you like to say in terms of as a reminder, as we're having these conversations going forward, should we keep in mind? Yeah, I think in bringing up the idea of figuring out what the identity of the institution is, I mean, you've got a mission. Every university, every college has a mission of what they're trying to accomplish. And I think building policy around that mission, particularly at an institute like uh, institution like SIU, where you've got both a teaching charge and a research charge, uh, a lot of places don't have both of those. So at a, uh, an all teaching school, you're gonna have a very different approach to what you're gonna be doing with AI than at a place that brings the research in as well. And I think it's a matter not of redesigning the institution's mission statement, but really rethinking 
thinking, how does AI help us advance that mission statement? And that's where you have to begin. But like we were talking about both uh, with the, the administration and with the faculty, AI is such a disciplinary contextual thing that you also at the same time don't want to create blanket policies simply because how I'm using it in a writing classroom is going to be different than how an artist is using it in an art classroom, an engineer, an engineering classroom, a computer science person. And those things have to fit the discipline, but they also have to fit the educational philosophies of the faculty member who's doing the teaching. Sure. And I think that that's important. Yeah, and one reason I wanted to invite you, uh, struck me at one of the talks I saw, is that you're always talking about never leaving or making feel, somebody feel as if they are not included. So if you just want to say one thing about that, that'd be great. Yeah, so that, you're right. That's something I talk about in every talk that I give. Um, you know, we have populations on every single campus of faculty who are either not interested in or don't see how the AI fits into their pedagogical uh, uh, objectives. And I don't want to create an atmosphere where we force those faculty to feel like they're obsolete. Mm -hmm. These are incredible teachers who have done a lot for students, who continue to do a lot for students. They've done fantastic research. They've built great programs. And we don't ever want to take that away. We want to make sure that they're still teaching to their strengths, that they're still upholding their teaching philosophies, because students and researchers benefit from for that. Sure. Yeah, we have some award-winning teachers here at SIU that are really, they don't use technology in their classroom because of how they've developed their curriculum is suiting for that. And students flock to their classes because they get a lot from them. There's kind of a buzz about them. And yeah, they don't, I don't think they need to incorporate AI because it doesn't fit with how they've developed. Absolutely. It. Knowledge transfer is happening and skills are being developed. So I really like that you say that. Uh, since we have you here on camera, might as well talk a little bit about what you are um, currently working on. So if you want to share with us kind of the research and books that we can uh, get our hands on, I'd love for you to share that with the audience. Sure. So there is a free resource that I put out from Broadview Press called uh, Talking About AI. It's, a, it's, it's sort of a short PDF. It's designed for higher ed and thinking about how do we integrate AI into higher education. Um, there is a textbook also out from Broadview called AI in Writing, which is about the writing intensive course and how we bring AI into that course. Mm -hmm. um, I put that book together primarily because when ChatGPT came out uh, and the focus was on writing generation, it sort of made writing the proving ground for AI across the academy, even though it's being deployed everywhere. We're talking about writing a lot. I have a collection coming out from Parlor Press called AI and the Humanities, uh, which is, you know, that's one of those conversations where we had assumed AI was really going to be about computer science and engineering. But we're seeing that AI and the humanities have a very dynamic relationship, mm -hmm. uh, which you had mentioned the term silo before is also an opportunity to think about interdisciplinarity and transdisciplinarity and rethinking what those silos are. Um, I'm also working on a larger project right now, and I don't have a title for it, but it's basically about the enduring questions mm -hmm. of AI, those bigger conceptual questions of how we're thinking about about what artificial intelligence is, might be, and how it's going to impact us. Not necessarily as educators, but more culturally, socially, and really sort of unpacking what are the conceptual things we need to be thinking about here. Absolutely. And so once those are out, I hope to read them, have faculty read them, and then we'll have you join us for a Zoom call for a little a book talk, right? Absolutely. Awesome. We, can, we can have the AI read them and they'll just summarize them for everybody. That's so, true too. Right? Yeah. So. Appreciate your time today. Yep. Thank it's you. It's been a great uh, having you on the SIU campus. Uh, we're really grateful. Well, thanks for having me. It's been an honor to be here. Awesome. Thanks. thanks.